Most of China's agriculture happens between the Huanghe River, or the Yellow River, to the north, and the Yangtze River, Changjiang, to the south. High up in the mountains, where the Yellow River begins, its water is very clear. But as it travels along its route through the high plateaus of Bayangkra Mountains, its color changes. Look at the picture to see if you can guess what makes this water turn yellow. Rain and wind washed a slit of fine mixture, soil, sand, and clay from the mountains into the river, making it muddy yellow. As this happens, the river bottom rises. And if the river bottom rises, what do you think happens to the water in the river? It rises too, and when this happens, the river overflows its banks, flooding the land and either side of it. We already know the importance of flooding. Which create fertile land for crops, but when large rivers like the Yellow River flood, they can also destroy whole cities. For this reason, the Chinese have given Yellow River two nicknames: Mother River and the Great Sorrow. The Yellow River region was not an easy place for early people to live. While the river's water was essential for crops and survival, it also brought destruction and sorrow with terrible floods. These floods were unpredictable and sometimes made worse by early solutions to contain the river. Now, this is the part where Yu, the engineer, comes into play. Yu is the most famous leader of China's first dynasty, Xia, which is largely considered to be a myth by historians. Yu wasn't the typical engineer that sat at the drawing board, measuring, calculating, and making models. Yu was a bit more hands-on. Legend has it that Yu teamed up with mermen, river spirits, and subcontracting dragons to redirect the river and the flood waters. He's also an animagus, can turn into a bear to knock down the badly designed dams and clear the waterway. The scene of which. Was accidentally seen by his wife, and she was too frightened that she actually petrified, and it became a big chunk of stone. Okay, that's it for the myths. The Yangtze River, China's longest river, lies to the south of the Yellow River. There, the temperature is much warmer, makes it possible for two or three harvests each year. Its fertile valley sometimes is called China's rice bowl, because its temperate climate is perfect for growing rice. Wheat and millet, used for making bread and noodles, grow along the Yellow River, but rice, the main crop of China, had its beginning along the Yangtze River. Together, these two river valleys. Form the country's greatest food-producing region. The Chinese has always been inventors. Many of their inventions changed the way people farmed, making the river valleys more and more productive. For example, the ancient Chinese invented seed planting instead of scattering seeds on top of the earth. They developed seed drills used for planting seeds in older rows. They invented iron plows and harnesses, so that horses or oxen could easily pull the plow. 
and to get water from lower ground to the crops planted on the higher ground, the Chinese invented a pump to irrigate the fields. And according to historians, uh, the development of irrigation technology is basically the start of mass production. So that's the start of the agriculture. Because Chinese were inventive people, farming became easier. More and more nomadic people began to settle permanently along the banks of the two great rivers, where food was abundant. Then the same thing that happened in China happened in Mesopotamia, Egypt, and India. Cities emerged. Many separate cities and areas sprang up along the river banks of the rivers, each led by a powerful king. The king ruled over the people, much like the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. The people built walls, houses, and temples. They made tools and weapons of wood, stone, bronze, and iron. They also built boats, and with the invention of copper coins, they began to trade with one another up and down both rivers. As they trade and formed, the Chinese continued inventing new tools and systems. One of these was writing, which you will soon learn about、um, as an important trademark of Chinese civilization.